And then uh, manual gear extension, landing gear lever off, manual gear extension handles pull. Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today in the video, guys, I'm going to show you something that I bet a lot of you guys haven't seen before. I'm going to show you how to do a manual gear extension on the 737. And um, I think quite a few of you are going to be quite surprised, so stay tuned. 231016, this video is brought to you in cooperation with our long-term sponsor, Brilliant.org. Now, when I was in school, I really, really was struggling with maths and physics, and I would have loved to have a tool like Brilliant next to me that would make it more fun, that will ex would explain to me in a more intuitive and fun way how to solve difficult problems. Now, the five on the first of you who uses this link here below will get 20% off the annual fee of Brilliant, but it's completely free to go and check it out, and I uh, suggest you to do just that. Five months 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Right, guys, so manual gear extension. First of all, why would you need to manually extend the gear? Well. If you've been following my, uh, my series about the 737, you know that all of the critical systems on the 737 are always backed up, right? You have something called redundancy, and that's it. that is when one system component fails, well then you need to have a different system component that can take up the slack, that can make sure that you get critical um, things done. And of course, getting the landing gear extended is a good thing you know it's nice to get landing gear out for landing so it is a critical component which means that it needs redundancy now taking the gear up as in retracting and extending the landing gear um, is handled by hydraulic system a the 737 has three different hydraulic systems you have system a system b and the standby system and in generally they work together kind of in tandem at least the a and b system the standby system is a little bit apart that jumps in if you have problems with either system but system a and b they kind of work together so for example flight control surfaces are controlled by both of them so if you have a loss of either hydraulic system you'll still be able to control the aircraft using the other system but some components inside of the hydraulic system are only managed by one of them so for example um, the trailing edge flaps are being uh, extended and retracted using hydraulic system b and the landing gear is being extended and retracted using hydraulic system A. So if you have a loss of system B, well then you will have an electrical motor that is driving the, the, the trailing edge flaps. And in the case of landing gear extension, well, in that case you have mother nature because they will actually use gravity to free fall into position. But of course, they're not going to free fall into position as soon as you lose the hydraulic system. That would be fatal if you're flying it up high. No, instead, you might have seen that when the, uh, the pilots ex uh, retract the gear after takeoff, they take it all the way up. And then, as part of the after takeoff checklist, we bring the gear level from up to off. And what that means is that we're actually taking away the hydraulic forces on the landing gear. So if you have it up, well then you have the um, hydraulic system A retracting the gear and holding it up. But you also have mechanical uplocks that goes into position and holds the gear in place. So in the after takeoff checks, when we take the gear level from up to off, what we're doing is we're taking away the hydraulic uh, system pressure and the gear is now resting on the mechanical locks. Okay. And the gear is very heavy. Uh, so this means that if, if we would lose system A, or we would need to do a, a manual extension, then what we would do is we will take our quick reference handbook up. In the quick reference handbook, you have all the non-normal checklists, every checklist that handles individual system malfunctions. And in here you have a um, checklist called manual gear extension. It also forms part of the loss of system A. You will have the same thing in there. And basically it gives you a step-by-step -step procedure on how to get the gear extended. Um, it says that we need to plan for a manual gear extension. And why would you need to do that? Well, it does take a little bit longer to read through this checklist and do all the steps than it does to just take the gear down. So while we, in normal cases, would extend the gear maybe at five nautical miles away from the runway or four nautical miles even if the weather is good, here 
you would possibly need to start with it about 10 nautical miles out just to give you that extra time needed. Um, you can extend the landing gear um, at fairly high speeds actually. Uh, everything from 0.82 which is our maximum Mach number to, let's see what it says here, 270 knots. Um, you can extend the gear, right? 270 knots is, is a very high speed. It's going to make a lot of noise, it's going to create a lot of drag at that speed, but it's not dangerous. However, you can't retract the gear uh, at those speeds. You actually need to reduce the speed to below 235 knots in order to retract it. And this has to do with not you know, damaging the actual components that are being used while the gear is being retracted. Anyway, in normal circumstances, you would be at way lower speeds than that when you're extending the gear. Um, so, um, without further ado, let's have a look and see how it, um, how it looks like in the cockpit. Okay, so we had to take a little bit extra time. So, uh, proceed with the uh, deferred item checklist, please. Deferred item checklist, uh, approach checklist, altimeters. Uh, then uh, manual gear extension, landing gear lever off, manual gear extension handles pull. Twenty-five hundred. Train is noted. The up leak release is when the handle is pulled to its limit. The related red landing gear indicator illum illuminates, indicating up lock release. Wait 15 seconds after the last manual gear extension handle is pulled. Sorry. And... Uh, Landing gear lever down. Down. Manual gear extension completed. Thank you. So, continue with the deferred items landing checklist, please. Landing checklist. Engine start switches. Continuous. Continuous. Speed brake armed. Armed. Landing gear down. Down. Flaps. 30 green light. Well, we're just waiting oh, for this, so flaps. <laughs> uh, well, 15. Speed check. Flaps 15 set. And flaps 30. Speed check. Okay, continue checklist. Flaps 30 plan, uh, sorry, 30 green light. 30 and a green light. Landing checklist complete. Thank you. One thousand stabilized. Check. One thousand high vibration, as discussed before. It's a, it's a spurious warning. Check. That's what we got from the tech club. Ethan. Just tell me when you see something. Runway lights. Thank you. Contact. Disconnecting. Check. 500. Check. 500. Check. 400. Check. 300. Approaching minimums. 200 minimums. Continue. Check. 100. You have five knots from the left. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Speed breaks up. Two reversers. 73%. You're working. How to break this arm? 80 knots. 60 knots. Tower uh, MN Tor 360, vacating via Echo 7. 
Right, that's pretty incredible, isn't it? An aircraft that's flying around in 2019 and still using physical wires that you have to pull out in order to release the physical uplocks and release the gear. Now, the thing is, though, but these, these kind of wires that's connected straight to the uplocks, they work, you know? This is the reason why Boeing hasn't changed this. This is the reason why Boeing are using systems like this. The same as the video that I did last week about how to manually trim the, um, the aircraft. You know, it kind of works. And as the old saying goes, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Now, if you paid attention in that clip, you would have seen that it said that in case you're using the manual gear extension, well then the landing gear will not be able to be retracted. So the reason for this is that inside of the manual ex uh, extension um, little bracket, you know, the, um, the thing that you open, there is a micro switch. And that micro switch disables the um, retraction mechanism. Um, and also, in most cases, the only reason that you would actually do a manual gear extension is because you've lost hydraulic system A, which means that there's no hydraulic system to actually raise the gear anymore. Now, this is very, very uh, important to know because if you are doing an approach into an airport and the weather is a little bit so-and-so, maybe close to your minimums and you're not really sure that you'll be able to land, well, in that case, on a planning stage, it might be worth considering diverting to an alternate where you know that the weather is good so that you can you know, be sure to land. Because if you end up having to go around and you won't be able to retract the gear because of the failure, well then with the gear hanging out, the aircraft is going to burn significantly more fuel and you might not have enough fuel in order to divert to an alternate. So take that into account. And I've actually had this in real life. Now, not because I had a loss of system A, but because the aircraft had been in for maintenance and they had been cleaning out that little door. Uh, we saw that already um, on, the, on the gate that they had done this maintenance. So we had a briefing saying that, you know, they have been doing maintenance on the aircraft. Um, you know, let's make sure that all of the circuit breakers are in and that everything is the way it should be. But we didn't think about the door. So we took off and uh, I was pilot monitoring at the time. Uh, the pilot flying called me to take the gear up. I raised the gear, nothing happened. So we went through the checklist because there is a non-normal checklist in the quick reference handbook for, for this particular reason. And some of the first steps in that checklist was make sure that the uh, manual gear extension door is properly closed. So we opened it up, closed it properly. Now the, micro the door obviously was closed, but the micro switch hadn't activated properly. So when we kind of pushed it down properly, well then, after that, we could raise the gear and continue. So these things, they, they do happen. And it's very important, guys, that you have the system knowledge in order to kind of have situational awareness and understand to a certain point why these things happen. Now, guys, here's a question for you. Uh, I want to do more videos from inside of the simulators. I want to show you everything that you guys want to see. But in order for me to do that, I need to know what it is that you guys are interested in. So in the comments below, what I would like you to do right now is go like the video if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and put the notification bell if you want more of this, but also go in and give me a, a comment. Tell me what you would like to see. Would you like me to, uh, to do more emergency maneuvers? Would you like me to do more normal maneuvers or anything else that, that I can show you? Because I want to really, really show you everything that we have inside of this fantastic uh, commercial aviation world. Now, I would like to send a fantastic thank you to the long-term sponsor of this channel, which is Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org has been helping me create content for you for almost two years now, and I'm really, really proud to have them as a sponsor because I know that they are providing a service that will help you increase your knowledge in two key areas that you will need in order to, well, succeed in your uh, flight training, but pretty much any technical occupation that you want to go for it's going to be important that you understand math and physics. And they do so in a very intuitive and kind of fun way, which I would have loved to have myself when, when I was younger and I was kind of struggling with maths and physics. Now, for example, they'll be sending out daily um, problems for you guys to solve. So when you're sitting on your commute, maybe in the subway or on the bus, instead of just mindlessly checking Facebook and Instagram, you can go in and you can try to solve these problems and actually learn something. 
Another feature that I really like are the different courses inside. So a course that I really recommend for you guys are Physics of Every Day. Because in there you will learn things that's happening around you. Things like, um, you know, meteorology. Why do the hurricanes turn the way they do? What's the mechanism behind that? Well, the 501st of you guys who uses this link here below will get 20% off the annual fee of Brilliant, but it's completely free to go and check it out. So I recommend you to do just that. And also guys, before you go, as always, I want you to go and join up in my free Mentor Aviation mobile app. It's available for both iOS and Android. You have the links in the description here below. And we have a fantastic community in there, a really, really positive and constructive community where you can go in and ask any question that you like. I am in there every day answering questions, but there are other commercial pilots in there as well from all over the world. There are flight students in there and there's aviation enthusiasts and people who are afraid of flying as well, who can go in and get an immediate answer to why, what is that sound or why does it feel like that or what is that? This is what I'm trying to achieve guys. I want to have this forum for you and I'm improving it every day. If you go in there and you're, in, you're kind of, you know, interested in getting some instruction directly from me, well, then you can get a collection. The all-in-one collection is only $5 and that will give you two hours of instruction with me where you can look around in the cockpit using 360 either by kind of scrolling with your finger or you can move your phone around or if you have a cardboard headset, you'll be able to put your device into that headset and it will feel just like you're sitting on the jump seat together with me when I'm doing things like a full setup of the 737 or a rejected takeoff, an emergency evacuation or TCAS maneuvers, CAT3 approaches, things like that. And remember, go in, put your comment in and tell me what you would like to see next. Have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.